adhere uh, uh, to the protocols. And I, we do also indicate that as a portfolio, we are looking at the best ways of improving in terms of our services. Even this, we are having uh, serious discussions around how else can we do it to make it better so that it's easily accessible to our people. On NPO registration and, and compliance, there was an increased demand for registration of NPOs between April and September. One can uh, deduce that this demand was driven mainly by the surge in the demand for social services, especially in poor and vulnerable communities. During this period, we received 14,762 new applications for NPO registration. Of this number, 9,998 applications were processed, while 7,600 69 NPOs uh, successfully registered. We intend to clear the backlog of NPOs registration by the end of the current financial year. With regard to compliance, I've already said that monitoring, uh, with compliance monitoring, we are also exploring the digitization of our service with most NPOs now being able to submit uh, annual uh, reports um, uh, online. And this issue of compliance really is a very big problem for us. I think if the CEO of of NDA would speak to our disbursement of the CARA funds and uh, how people are not now uh, being compliant again or being uh, uh, accountable uh, to that. We will not disperse any funds when people are not uh, compliant. In fact, I think MECs, one of the things that we need to do, we do need to talk to our communities and see as to whether the service is worth the amount of money that we are, we are dispersing. Because we've got to see the value for the money that that government um, is, is giving. On social grants, since the declaration of the state of national disaster in March, SASA has without fail continued with the normal business of paying social grants without any major interruptions, including the implementation of the six-month top-up grants that were announced by President Cyril Ramaphosa in April. We have commenced with payments for December to avoid overcrowding and long queues at the pay points. To date, more than, uh, than 11.4 million beneficiaries have received their social grants to the tune of 15.5 billion. Between May and October, we allocated an additional financial support of over 11 million social grant recipients, and the amount spent was approximately 31 a, a billion. And I know that there are many who are sitting at home now and saying, again, Muzo, again, Anglo Minister, we are Kuluma Uti, Isasa, Isebenzile, Yenzega, Isbatele, Tina Satle, Lilaskaga, Itoli, Imaliet. We have made the commitment to say, those that have not been able to receive their money, uh, who, were, who qualified to get their money, we are working very hard to make sure that they get their money. We are also working very hard to make sure that we improve our system, especially when it comes to the payments that are made at the post office. Um, we're trying to improve that processing of new disability grants. One of the challenges that SASA faced during the lockdown period relates to the processing of temporary disability grants as face-to-face -face assessments and, clo and closure of some of the health facilities became a problem. With a view to lessen the administrative burden on beneficiaries, I extended the payment of temporary disability until the end of uh, this month. About 210,000 temporary disability grants will lapse on December on 31st December 2020, we urge all those affected by the lapsing of this extension to promptly contact local SASA offices for an assessment. Applicants are reminded to have a referral letter from the medical practitioner before they report to SASA offices. SASA is already working on a plan to ensure that those who need to reapply for the temporary disability grant are afforded the opportunity uh, to do so. And with regard to special Special COVID-19 social relief of distress, uh, uh, the social relief of distress grant. We have we have to date distributed 13.5 billion rand to more than six million eligible beneficiaries. As a portfolio, we are pleased with the government's decision to extend the provision of the grant for a further three months until January 20, uh, 2021. Of the 9.5 million application processed in November, over 6.9 million applications were. 
approved and are already paid. We are currently processing applications for December and we intend to process payments before the last week of the month. Of these payments, SAPO accounts for 4 million, 1.6 million are paid through personal accounts and 100,000 through uh, the mobile money, mobile money or cash sent platform. There is still relatively small a number of applications approved but not yet paid for the period between May and October. This is due to a number of issues including information verification, banking details verification, while in other cases SASA is struggling to locate the applicants as the contact numbers used during the application are no longer in use. The remaining 1% of the outstanding applications will be processed for payment as soon as we have completed this. At this point actually uh, SASA Oh, I think we have to thank uh, those people who have really been supportive and assisting uh, those who were unable to do so. Utatuvula, pa, utatuvulupi, by the way. Utatuvula, pa, Eastern Cape. Utatuvula, yena, utata eake e phone. And then when we are doing the verifications, Tolugu's cell phone, his cell phone, your muntu oi one. But again, I talked to him over the phone because I like the fact that even though he got his money at the beginning of the month and then didn't get it the following month, Utatuvula was able to say, Minister, dingatanabanya aba around him na because abana ma means. So that is what we want to encourage. But of course, sometimes it becomes a nightmare for the system because then the system doesn't recognize the number, doesn't recognize the the ID and all that. But it's Abulela to all those who were able to uh, assist others. We are uh, experiencing challenges with regard to a number of uh, unclaimed benefits despite the fact that they have been approved. Currently there are 40,584 unclaimed benefits mainly from the cash sent or mobile pay option. The, ma the majority of applicants who opted for this payment channel have failed the cell phone verification process and this has raised questions regarding the compliance with RICA requirements. We have tried to reach out to these applicants with very little success but we will not give up. When we say that we've not been able to reach them doesn't mean that we will give up. We'll keep on trying and with the help of volunteers also I'm sure we can be able to trace. We therefore call on all applicants to collect their grants as this is intended to assist them to meet their basic needs. On fraud and compliance management, we remain concerned by the large number of applicants who, despite their ineligibility, ineligib, ineligibility, oh Jesus Christ, I guess Kulumi Zulu, maybe Zobangu. Knowing, knowingly apply for the social special COVID-19 SRD grant to defraud the system. Over 3 million of such applicants were found to have other sources of income, including 7,482 who were found to be receiving social grants. 605,466 were registered for the UIF and 168,920 received a NESFAS. A major concern is that over 8,000 applicants were found to be using the personal particulars of deceased persons. This is not only illegal but criminal. Thanks to our investment in fraud preven prevention and detention, we are now able to act speedily to deal with suspicious cases and fighting fraud by working with other government entities and law enforcement agencies. Let me hasten to add that we will be instituting recovery measures for persons who may have illegally received the grants meant for the most uh, vulnerable. On online grant applications, COVID-19 has sparked considerable shifts and has opened a new era of digitizing our services. One such area is the automation of grant applications with SASA is currently, and SASA is currently piloting. This will enable applicants to apply online without leaving the comfort of their homes. The initial pilot is limited to applications for grants for older persons, foster child care grant and child support grants. With the 
disability related grants being added as, as at a later stage. Once the necessary links of the medical assessments have been uh, uh, resolved, the pilot commenced in September and has been running for a period of three months with checks and balances consistently being built into the system to ensure first and foremost the protection of personal information. This is the first of many initiatives in the pipeline. It is important that we do not forget the key lessons we learned as we adapt to the new normal. On residential facility care for older persons, drug treatment centers, shelters for survivors of gender-based violence and femicide, and child and youth care workers. The 16 days of activism for no violence against women and children ended yesterday. The department is implementing the 365-day program of action with focus on expanding prevention and expansion of services to ensure survivors receive timely and appropriate services to avoid secondary victimization. Department currently consolidating public inputs received for the Victim Support Service Bill, which advocates for a victim-centered approach. We recently launched also the Gender-Based Violence Command center, which has been relocated to new and bigger premises. On average, the command center deals with, uh, with more than 200 calls per day. The new premises will accommodate a workforce of 30 personnel and create opportunities for the recruitment and employment of social work, uh, social work professionals. On the rollout of a hashtag Asikulume and the Boys and Men Championing Change program, we focus on district development model. Expansion of Kuselega one-stop centers in six provinces to ensure each has one that provides multi-sectoral approach to survivors of GBV to rebuild their lives and access a justice. As part of the ongoing measures to implement Pillar 4 of the National Strategic Plan on GBV, the department, in partnership with NDA, has appointed 312 civil society organizations through the Criminal Assets Recovery Account funding. With regard to residential facilities for older persons, the department has forged partnership with private sector and civil society. We have also been able and continue to track and trace COVID-19 infections, recoveries and deaths within our residential inter facilities. Interventions as such as hospitalization, accessing medication, quarantine procedures, among others, are monitors are monitored on an ongoing basis. Excuse me, I do need a. Uh, it's a bit hot. No, no, I don't need that. It is true. My apology is quite hot in here. Um, uh, with regard on, on secure uh, on secure care centres, all secure care centres are COVID-19 compliant, and standard operating procedures were operationalised. Cases of children detained in secure centres on compulsory diversions are also carefully monitored, and we have visited some of these uh, care centres ourselves. With regard to sentenced children. All efforts which were implemented prior to lockdown, such as early release of these, those eligible, are cautiously being implemented. This is to ensure the promotion of individualized response, which strikes a balance between the circumstances of the child, the nature of the offense, and the interests of society. On substance abuse, South Africans generally overindulge in alcohol and illicit substances during the time of this year than any other. Time. We are concerned about how this phenomenon, as we, in, we are in the midst of the global pandemic, that thrives when we let our guards down. Such behaviors are likely to contribute to the new surge of COVID-19 infections and gender-based violence and femicide. To address this, we are conducting the, anti, the annual anti-substance abuse festive campaign by the way, festive campaigns, we, we cannot have them in the same way that we're having the festive campaigns. We've got to use a different way. Um, focusing on COVID-19 and GBVF hotspots throughout the country. The national campaign is aimed at educating the country's citizens, especially young people, about the dangers and adverse effects of alcohol and um, substance abuse. 
The uh, campaign will be launched in Tlokwe, Northwest, uh, tomorrow during the official um, opening of the JB Max uh, Treatment Center, which, um, which will bring the total number of public treatment centers to 13 with at least one in each province. Given the devastating impact of alcohol on families, we support measures proposed in the amendment of the Liquor Act 2003, among others, restrictions of advertising, marketing, promoting and sponsorship of alcohol beverages. We also support proposals for the set setup of special funds to which the liquor industry will contribute a percentage of their net profits towards prevent, prevention and harm reduction, as well as further reduction of alcohol levels for drink and driving to 0.02%. On creating uh, jobs and economic opportunities, the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic occurred at a time our country was in recession. If there is a silver lining about this pandemic, it is, it is that it has forced us to think outside of the box and to find innovative ways to maximize the impact of our work and align it with the district development model. The NDA set aside 32 million for 200 civil society organizations organizations, including cooperatives, to st stimulate local economic development through the procurement of PPE and recruitment of volunteers uh, at district municipalities. I think that the DA today gave us um, a masks that have been made, I suppose, by a cooperative somewhere or a small business, NDA, yes. But also the department yesterday gave us uh, T-shirts and it was quite exciting that I saw that the T-shirts were not made somewhere else where I always complain about. So we have local production, uh, even if it comes from Lesotho in the neighboring countries, it's okay, the money is still remaining uh, within the region. This initiative has far surpassed our expectation as it created 2,000 job opportunities and gave our youth who are hard as his by the current high levels of unemployment opportunities to contribute to the communities while improving the livelihoods of their families. Looking at the voucher, uh, looking at the number of volunteers, I can safely say that more than 10,000 family members benefited indirectly from the stipends. To date, a total of 6.1 million has been paid to participating CSOs and volunteers. Eight of these volunteers in OR Tambo districts were given four to six months temporary contracts as social work under victim empowerment program in the department and are receiving a stipend of about 6,000 a month. The volunteers comprised of 1,600 women and 400 men. Youth made the largest number at 1,750. To date, the program has reached 181,171 households, distributed 73,581 food parcels, and assisted 147, 289,000 to apply for special COVID-19 COVID-19 SRD grant. In addition, the NDA availed economic opportunities to 16 women-owned cooperatives across all provinces to produce the PPEs to the value of 1.1 million uh, for the volunteer program. On older persons facilities, with regard to older persons facilities, the visitation approved Visitations are prohibited except for relatives and under strict COVID-19 protocols. New admissions will only be considered for older persons in distress subject to strict adherence to COVID-19 protocols. We have partnered with the National Institute of Communicable Diseases, NICD, and will continue to track and trace the COVID-19 infections within uh, residential facilities. We take this opportunity to acknowledge the generous support of our partners to ensure that our older persons are protected from this deadly pandemic. And on adoption and international social services, I'd like to inform the public that we will continue to render domestic and national adoption 
services. However, the suspension of international adoption services will remain in, in effect until further notice. The full impact of COVID-19 pandemic on our society and all our sectors in particular is still emerging. But what is certain is that it will be felt for many years to come. The increase on, in unemployment, homelessness, gender-based violence and femicide, and concerns of the impact of the prolonged pandemic on mental health are some of the key emerging issues that threaten to exacerbate some of the prevailing social ills uh, in our country. And the issue of mental illness, I think, is one that we need to really uh, focus on. As an impact of this pandemic spread across our country, the capacity of DSD portfolio to respond to match the full scale of the challenges, especially in protecting those most in need, will continue to be tested. This presents us with an opportunity to learn new ways of doing things and to reimagine the DSD portfolio. The last six months have been a learning curve for all of us, but we have demonstrated how much more we can achieve when we work together. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honourable Minister, for um, that um, th th those those inputs. We will now take questions, and how we will do it? We will take four questions at a time. We will do two rounds. Uh, so we will start with the questions that are online. If we can have the first four questions, we will direct them accordingly. Uh, let me just confirm. Uh, so members of the media, please do indicate who you'd like to direct, direct your questions to. Currently in the room, we have the MEC of Social Development of Limpopo, uh, Ms. Karaneng uh, Rahwale, the MEC of Social Development of the Northern Cape, Ms. Ntombela Vilagazi, and the MEC of Social Development of the Northwest, Ms. Boitumelo Umuelowa. So those are the MECs that are currently here. The HODs are here from the other departments and we'll be able to take those as well. Okay, can we have the first round of questions? We'll take four. If you could read them, please. You could read them. Okay. So there are mics on the on the tables because of COVID. Um, you could just press those mics and then go through. Hi, good morning, Minister and your team. It's Kylie Lekumala here from ENCA. So, Minister, with regards to the special COVID-19 grant, so you said you have done a very sterling job in terms of the payment, but also I just want to understand in terms of the applicants that haven't been paid, uh, do you have any estimates, you know, just in terms of the actual payment and just in terms of the arrest, you know, as part of your anti-corruption plan, how far are you with cracking down on those who have stolen essentially from the states? Thank you. Thank you very much, Kailise. Do we have any more questions in the house? There's one at the back. Please introduce yourself as well and the media house that you are from. Hi, my name is Malungelo Boy from Newsroom Africa. Minister, you spoke about those um, 40... We, we didn't get who speaking. Malungelo Boy from Newsroom Africa. <laughs> my name is Malungelo... Okay. Which... Okay. Uh, my name is Malungelo Boy from Newsroom Africa. Minister, you spoke about those 40,000... Is it 40,000 of those grants that were approved that you you have not been able to sort of like locate the people. So what happens then to that um, money? Does it stay there? What, 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 is there an effort that's made to, to find those people? And you spoke about uh, recovering money from those that have in fact um, defrauded the system. Have you started with that process already? Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Malungelo. Do we have any more questions internally? Okay, can we take uh, three online? We don't have any online. Hey. It means the, the, wow. the, the, the remarks were spot on, Minister. Okay. I can't believe that. <laughs> okay. Uh, Minister, if you would... I think I can this, ask um, allow the CEO uh, the CEO to um, I can ask the CEO to give the uh, the data because she's got all the data and also what we we, we, we have to do to uh, try and trace the people who have not been paid I thought it was important first to just respond to the issues from Kaelise and, and Malungelo. On the applicants that were not paid, um, we have actually given all the names of the people that we have not been able to trace. Uh, to the region so that the regions can actually go and get th and find the people in the different areas it's important to highlight that some of the people that have not been paid that, that have not gone to get their money some of the money is actually at the post office uh, we've sent people a number of SMSs and they have not gone to get their money at the end of the financial period, because we need to make sure that we're able to account back uh, to National Tre Treasury, we'll then engage as to what is it that needs to be done. But if the money is not taken until the end of the financial year, we'll consult with the minister and take a view as to what should happen. Because as we know, the money is supposed to be given to the individuals for what is the current situation to address the co uh, COVID challenges that they are uh, currently experiencing. The other people that we found is that with those people that actually already have post office accounts that did not declare that they have those accounts uh, to us, it's difficult for the op post office to open yet another account. That's why they, they continue to get rejected. So we'll continue to, to, to make all uh, and endeavors to make sure that those people uh, that have not uh, received their money, one, we track and trace them, and when we find them, uh, we, we can ensure that they get their money. And those that who, who, for whom we are still battling with regards to, to, to the accounts, once we the, the regions have found them, we can make sure that they get paid. On the issue of the people that have fraudulently uh, applied for grants that some of whom I want to believe that they should have known that they did not qualify for the grant because we indicated upfront as to what is the qualification uh, criteria. Those people that are working for government, few as they may be, we were writing to all their departments so that one, we can ensure that we can get the money back, uh, but over and above that, that the, their departments can then start uh, internal procedures in terms of ensuring that uh, a consequence management is applied in relation to those uh, particular ones that are working for government, just as we've seen with what has happened uh, in the uh, city of Johannesburg. They've already started processes in relation to that. The intention is also to try and get data uh, from all the other um, local government structures because much as we've got uh, uh, information from city of Johannesburg, we don't have the other information and we'll continue to check as to who are the people that uh, got uh, money that uh, did, were not eligible uh, for the money. We've taken a num we've found a number of people that have been found to have committed other other, other frauds in other environments because we work with a whole range of other institutions uh, in the country that in investigate these. We found, for example, that there's people whose IDs have been uh, involved in fraudulent activities or cell phones that have been uh, involved in fraudulent activities. We found about 42,000 of those people were going to reconfirm again to say, are you certain that um, much as you may have, because some of, pe of the people may have gone to jail and came back from jail, uh, that we need a double confirmation before we can actually pay them. Those are the people that we've actually handed over to the few 
fusion uh, center because as we know we work with other law enforcement agencies to make sure that um, we're not on our, on our own in terms of uh, managing this. The other key area that I think I need to clarify is the issue of those people that have uh, made appeals. We have uh, to date about uh, 300,000 appeals from what we, we have found on the system. We know that uh, uh, issues have been raised about the number of people that are actually dealing with uh, appeals. The fact that at head office we've got only 10 people and in the regions we have another, another, uh, another 42,000 that are dealing with this. It's because this is a digital platform. The only thing that the, the, the people at head office are doing manually is just sorting out the emails and making sure that the people that have made the appeals go to the correct queue. Subsequent to that, it then becomes a digital process. That's why we don't necessarily need to throw people at the problem and, and can use a different process to make sure that we assess that. I know that it's been raised like it's because we're not dealing with it. Uh, but we are, because this is important. Uh, and, and the other issue is that on a continuous basis, we actually validate each and every client to make sure that uh, they are not, uh, um, we don't have exclusion errors. The one issue that could have caused uh, exclusion errors could be the fact that we did not in the past have updated database, for example, from UIF, which we now have. We've been working together with the, with the commissioner to make sure that uh, we get a, a much cleaner database so that we can validate all the people that have made af appeals so that we can make sure that they get their money. The other people that uh, had actually not received money also are those people that are with UIF. We've since sent the database to UIF so that we can ensure that uh, UIF can validate them. We've received already back 2,700 uh, clients that uh, UIF has validated and ensure that they didn't qualify. The only uh, data that we're not going to use is the SARS database because one should be either within SARS or within UIF, so we'll only use UIF to ensure that we re-qualify the people that may not have qualified. So, Mfunukela Ntembise Gulabo Aseba Bafagile is Delo, so Apila Wuti. So, our process, our one Kelama application, wow. E application yok Tina, Esso, except I appeal Iso Bango fifteen Zaga February and Goba, Gogom Teto, or Beba or Minisa Wuti. Manga Besses the dealer who process I application, Goba Nago says in Julses Katisati, E grant Iso Kubega, Tinamo Genoa. Gush good manga be Uenze Apiliaco, Kikulumanga la. Azabe, Abaza, Beba, applying or January. He appealed Yabo Sizoi Pega until May fifteen Zaga February. He go see Show Guti, Sitabanguti, Zabeska Dilio, Uwenza Wonkum Sebenzi, Sikine is system by the end of February so that no matches was Guti Sripote, Gu President through a minister Uguti Yines Wenzi, Le Gugu Black Shot Accord. Gabonga Gakul. No, so this will be sunny time. <laughs> Thank you very much, and CEO. I'm not sure if any of the MECs yes. uh, would want to say something because we, we just happened to be lucky. We, we yes. came here waiting for long, long, many, many questions. So if yes. any one of them would like to say something. Yes, I'd like to invite the MECs if they would like to say if anyone to of add, them please. want to add or something. MEC Northern Cape, Northwest, and on Limpopo. And then we can Limpopo. also ask um, uh, NDA to speak to the issue of the CARA funds. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you very much, okay. CEOs. Um, okay. Are there any more questions that have popped in? Um, no, please online? don't ask for more questions. Okay. If they are not there, they are not there. <laughs> okay.
Um, thank you, Minister. Good morning, uh, MECs, colleagues, media uh, colleagues. Uh, mine is to explain on briefly on CARA, which is a criminal asset uh, recovery account, which is implemented by National Development Agency, like Home Minister Obega explaining Luguti. These are funds that are given to CSOs and NGOs and NPOs that are dealing with gender-based violence in the country. In the 168 that we have given the first tranche, what we are experiencing is the challenge of reporting. Some, because they are still emerging, they are funded for the first time, they've been doing good work. However, because of the tight controls that we have, because these funds are linked to CARA funds, are linked to COVID-19 funds, if I can put it like that. So we had to make sure that our internal controls are tight. The struggle that they have is that the work is done on the ground. When they report, we don't take the report on the face value. We take the report, we go back to the uh, civil society, we go back to the beneficiaries, which is the community, and we evaluate. The gap that has been there is that they, it's either they report outside what they contracted on, or they don't know how to report at all. So we don't penalize them. As National Development Agency, our role is to capacitate them, is to empower them. So the delay is that, however, those who are well established, they've been doing business for some time and making these programs for some time. We've received, from 168, we have received only 24 up to now. So only once we receive all the, we, we don't penalize those who submitted on time, but we just make sure that we do our quality check, our due diligence, and then we give them their second tranche. However, it is a concern that the, the gap from those who are well established and those who are still emerging, yet the gender-based violence is in the deep rural areas, is in the township, is in the semi-rural areas. It is a concern for NDA to strengthen the capacity capacity building, to work closer with social workers. And I'm happy to say, Minister, social workers that have been in the Eastern Cape that have been working with us through this CARA, some have been absorbed as well as social workers to social development to do this work. So those who have been trained by social development in the past and were never employed by the Department of Social Development through the CARA program will prioritize that they come through to assist the NGOs and will be in, uh, uh, embarking on the program now going forward to ensure that for the second tranche that is there, all these cross uh, the T's and the I's, we are make sure that they are there. But we want to uh, really appreciate the hard work they do, the hard work that they've done during lockdown to make sure that they take care of our communities, especially those in rural areas. They are doing a sterling work. We really want to appreciate. But we won't compromise on monitoring and evaluation. However, we won't penalize you. We will empower you, we will uh, capacitate you until you are fit to give quality reports that we require to account. Thank you. Um, I think we, um, I wish to thank the MECs for taking time to be here. From here we are going to now engage on our normal uh, MINMAC meeting where we have to look at the things that we're talking about here and uh, what we're going to be doing um, during this period of COVID-19. Uh, during the December period I think it's going to be a hectic period for, for us whether we like it or not. Um, and so we have to just go and engage on what plans do we have at a national level, at a provincial level. Um, and uh, I know that Ogoklunga uh, Kulu is this whole issue of gender-based violence, the killing of women and children. Uh, um, if we can just, as communities, mobilize and know what is happening next door, uh, know your neighbors, 
Um, if you hear any cries, please do not close your ears and your eyes. If you know that something is happening, go next door and we ask you to mama while I pick higher into your ears, you is back. Still, you go to your ear, you too long, you go to your ears, 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 you also is to say gubantu uh, bagiti as we go out and uh, enjoy the festive season it will not be the same families are not going to be enjoying it the same way re kupa gore di family le tsone batswadi di neighbor and everybody re kupa gore le bone gore go next door wetsa halang it's not interfering with wetsa halang go next door Kuri, how would you feel there's a scream or there's a cry? Please do not close your ears and your eyes. Help us end the sketch against violence uh, against women and children. But also, I'd like to thank my colleagues uh, who we have been working with in particular with regard to the issue of gender-based violence, uh, the Department of Women, Youth and People with Disability, the Department of Justice and the Department of Police. And uh, thank the men in in blue and the women in blue who despite all the challenges they really are going out there and doing the best that they can please let us let us not rubbish them because they are also just human beings they need to be supported they need to be assisted because they usually are the first people to come across a crime scene which in many instances is very brutal a uh, crime scene so let's uh, support each other but more than anything else, I'll, I'd like to thank um, the DSD family, the DSD portfolio. I don't work alone. And you guys must always understand when we call you nonstop and we are questioning and demanding, it is simply because we don't, as MECs, work alone. We work with the department. So the HOD is... Um, uh, the DGGs, the DG, and everybody is very important uh, to us. And as I've said in the beginning, be safe yourself before you think you can save others. We lost too many, even among us, uh, especially Sasa. I think Sasa is the one that was a, a, a hard hit. We've lost a lot. Um, and to the families who are part of our families. We are sorry that this happened. Uh, COVID-19 is real. Can everybody just really try their best to stick um, to the COVID protocols? Thank you. And to the media, by the way, you guys, thank you very much. Uh, we shouldn't forget that you are out there and you are assisting us um, in the communication and in ensuring that uh, uh, people understand and appreciate what we do as government. Uh, it's okay. This is democracy. We fought for it. We build in the democracy. So see, I'm going to go five, no four, no three, Ben. <laughs> Thank, thank you very much, Minister. Uh, I won't go into the numbers. I think you said it all. Ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the end of our media briefing. Thank you very much for being part of it. I uh, will ask the MECs um, and the Minister to kindly take leave at this time um, before everybody else does. Thank you very much. Yeah, <laughs> 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 <laughs>